Hello everyone, my name is Ming. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about color space setting in camera as well as in post-processing software such as Lightroom, Capture One, and Photoshop. This is the second video about color space. And in the last video, I talked about how color space works. And if you haven't watched that video, you can use the link at the top or use the link in the description below. Before we jump into the video, just want to mention that if you are interested in Luminar 4, you can use the coupon code MING during checkout to save $10. If you are interested in Capture 120, you can use the link in the description to get 30 day free trial. And after the free trial, if you want to continue, uh, please consider using code MING during checkout to support my channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, color space. Adobe RGB provides a wider color range, so why not always use Adobe RGB? Why even my camera and my post-processing software give me the option to choose one over the other? Everything has advantages and disadvantages, so is Adobe RGB color space. On one hand, Adobe RGB color space provides more colors, which means you have more colors to select from for your photos. On the other hand, Adobe RGB color space is less commonly supported, which means some browsers, some applications might not support Adobe RGB color space. Some online photo printing labs still require sRGB color space and don't support Adobe RGB color space. In that case, if a color space is not supported, then you won't be able to get accurate colors. By comparison, sRGB is a smaller color range, but it is widely supported across the internet, which means you can guarantee the accurate colors out of your photos, assuming the monitors are calibrated. I use sRGB for all my photos shared online, and I only use Adobe RGB for printing if the printing lab supports Adobe RGB color space. With that in mind, let's talk about which color space to choose in your camera setting as well as in the post-processing software setting. I would say in the camera, it's probably better to set the color space to be sRGB instead of Adobe RGB. Here is why. If you shoot raw files, then this color space setting in the camera doesn't matter at all because this color space setting is not applied to raw files. A raw file is a raw file. It is a collection of data. And when you import those raw files into post-processing software such as Lightroom, Capture One, or Photoshop, the software uses the color space specified in the software to render your raw files. Therefore, the color space setting in your camera is not used at all. Now, if you shoot JPEG only, I assume you want the JPEG files to be ready to share with friends, with the internet, without much post-processing. In that case, I would say you probably want sRGB in this case, so that you don't need to worry about if your photos will be, uh, the colors will be rendered correctly on the internet. However, in post-processing software, I would recommend to use a wider color space, a wider color range, because you can always convert it back to small smaller color range and a smaller color space. Here is how you can set the color space setting in Lightroom, Capture One, and Photoshop. Before we dive into it, I just want to mention that my monitor is BenQ SW2700PT. It is a 27 inch monitor that supports 99% of Adobe RGB color space. If you are interested, I will put a link in the description below. First, let's take a look at Lightroom. Lightroom always use Profoto RGB color space to display all the photos. Profoto RGB is even wider than Adobe RGB color space. It doesn't give you the option to change the color space inside Lightroom, but it does give you the option to change the color space for external editing. You can go to edit and then go to preferences and then go to external editing. The first section specify the color space uh, if you want to edit the photo in Photoshop. And then the second section specifies the color space if you want to edit the photo in any other applications. Once you change this setting, just click on OK. And then whenever you want to export the photo, you can right click on the photo and then go to export. And it gives you the option to choose which color space you want to render the final photo. Like I mentioned earlier, Lightroom always use Pro Photo RGB to display the photo, but you have the option here to convert it to Adobe RGB or sRGB. Whenever you are ready, just click on export. 
Now let's take a look at Capture One. Capture One allows you to specify which color space you want to use in Capture One to render your raw files. It is under Process Recipes, and I have three recipes right here. The first one is for creating a smaller file for sharing on the internet with sRGB color space. The second recipe is the original size with sRGB color space. And then the third recipe is original file with Adobe RGB color space. So if I select a sRGB recipe, then this file, this raw file, will be rendered with sRGB color space. If I go to Adobe RGB color space, then this file will be rendered with Adobe RGB color space. So if you pay attention, let me grab the pen, draw annotation. So if you pay attention to this area, now I'm going to switch to sRGB, Adobe RGB now, sRGB, Adobe RGB. As I switch between the different recipes, you can see the colors here changed slightly. That is because it is converting between Adobe RGB and sRGB. So for each raw file, basically I have three recipes and then I select all three, all three recipes and then I click on process, then I will have three photos with different size and color space. So the sRGB color space, I mostly share with uh, share online and then I keep a copy of the original size with sRGB and then the original size Adobe RGB is mostly for printing. Last but not least, let's take a look at Photoshop. In Photoshop, I can go to Edit and then go to Color Settings. And personally, I use ProPhoto RGB to be the color space in Photoshop. And then I check all these options. The reason I choose ProPhoto RGB with all these options checked is because when I open up a photo in Photoshop, I get a small window that reminds me what color space is originally used. Let me give you a example. So I can go to File and then go to Open. And let's say I want to open this file. Now this little window pops up and it tells me currently my working color space is ProPhoto RGB. And the original color space for that photo is Adobe RGB. And I have these options. And I almost always use the first option, which is use the embedded profile. So that means I'm gonna work on the photo with Adobe RGB color space. The benefit of doing that is I'm always clear which color space I am using on that particular photo. When you are done with the photo, you can go to File and go to Export and Export As. And you have a couple of settings right here. And one quick tip is check Embed Color Profile. If you want to convert the photo to sRGB, then you check convert to sRGB. If you want to keep the color space, then you just uncheck that option. But you always want to embed the color profile. So for example, if you are working with a photo with Adobe RGB color space, you want to keep that profile. So you want to uncheck this box and then you, you check this box. So Adobe RGB color space will be embedded to the JPEG file and then click on export. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. All right, guys, enjoy photography. See you next time.